Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. So in this video, we're going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day. And today's problem is powerful integer and it is an easy level problem. So like if I compare today's problem with other easy level problems on GFG, I don't think that uh, this particular easy tag justifies the difficulty level of this problem because uh, like uh, there is uh, at least something to think about this problem and it is not so simple as compared to other easy problems on the same platform. I believe that this could also be a case that my own implementation was a little bit complex and there might exist some simpler solutions as well. So we are just going to discuss how I implemented this particular problem. So let us quickly start uh, with the problem statement. It says that we have been given a 2D integer array of size n, right? So it is the array will be of the form, uh, it represents some ranges, right? Also called intervals. So each element will have a start and the ending index, right? So both of the, both the start and the ending index are inclusive. And we have also been given an integer k. We have to return the power, the most powerful integer, right? They define a powerful integer that occurs at least k times, right? So if multiple integers have um, occurred more than k times, then we have to return the maximum integer out of those. So basically we have solved this question, type of questions multiple times and generally it is a medium level problem. So that is why I said that the easy tag just does not justify the difficulty of this particular question. But still, we are going to discuss uh, this problem. So let us have this particular test case. We will discuss what it says. So uh, by the interval 1, 3, the first interval is 1, 3. So it means that every integer between 1 and 3, including both 1 and 3 will be present at uh, like one time. right? So 1 will be present one time and 2 will be present one time and 3 will be present one time. So let me write this more integers as well and then I will write their frequencies. So if these are the integers i and these are their frequency. So currently, the frequency of the first three element is 1. Now they have given a range 4 to 6. So 4, 5 and 6, they also have frequency 1. Now 3 to 4 has like th does the third range is 3 to 4. So all the elements will in 3 to 4 will get uh, their frequency incremented by 1. So this will become 2, this will become 2. Now they have, now this is the final frequency array and they have given us an integer k. Right, this is the value of k. We have to tell uh, if there exists some integer which has a frequency at least equals to k. Now in this particular case, since there are two of them, we have to remove, return the maximum of these integers and in this case that is 4. So 4 will be the answer in this particular test case. So essentially what we have to will have to do is, we have been given some intervals and uh, for each interval we will have to increment the frequency of all the characters in that particular interval by 1. Once we have the final frequency array, we have to tell whether there exists an element with a frequency of at least equals to k, if there are multiple of them, we have to return the maximum among those integers, right? So this is our whole problem. Now, how do we actually solve this problem? So uh, there is a very interesting way to solve this problem and we have discussed it multiple times since I am making these POTD videos. This particular uh, approach has uh, been used multiple times. So uh, I'll tell you what we generally do in these types of questions. Whenever we have been given such ranges, uh, we divide the ranges into two parts. So this is three, this is 6 this is 4. So we divide the ranges into two parts that is the starting range and the ending range. Right. So these will be the starting points and these will be the ending points. So what we generally do is, uh, for example, if I want to calculate the frequency of any element at index i. So the frequency of any element at index i will be equals to the frequency of all the elements that have started at 0, that have started at 1, that have started at 2 right and so on up to that have started till i right so the frequency of all the ranges that has been started uh, it started from 0 started from 1 started from those and up to started till i minus uh, frequency of all the ranges that have ended at 0 that have already ended at 1 and so on up to that have ended till n i minus 1 right so this is the basic formula that we calculate uh, the frequency of i ith element with right so in we can write it as frequency of i is equals to starting at 0 up to starting till i plus mi minus uh, ending of 0 up to ending of i minus 1 right and if you try to write frequency of i minus 1 you can write it as starting of 0 up to started of starting of i minus 1 minus ending of 0 my up to ending of i minus i minus 2 Right. So this is how you can write it. Now if you see that this particular part is common in both of them, this is common, this part is common, 
and this part is common and here also this part this part will be common and this whole part will be common so i can essentially write f of i s f of i s f of i minus 1 plus s of i minus ending of i minus 1. so this is what we generally do in these kind of problems right we create an array and at uh, and we will we'll be able to calculate the frequency of each step as the frequency of caret or the frequency of the ranges at, at f of i minus 1 and all the ranges that have started at the current index minus all the ranges that have ended at the previous index right so this is how we generally solve these kind of problems now in this particular case since uh, the value or the ranges are up to 10 raised to the power 9 right we cannot definitely use a, a array or vector here we will have to use maps right so one map will be will denoting the starting frequencies and one map will denote the ending frequencies so what we can essentially do is we will uh, calculate the prefix uh, sums in the starting in the starting map right so for example there is one range starting at 1 let's say there is one range starting at 1 one range starting at 2 one range starting at 3 and another range starting at 3 right so initially this particular start map will have will look something like this so at one position there is one at two positions there is uh, one and at three position there is two this will indicate that there is one range starting from the index one there is one range starting from the index two there is one range starting from the index three now we try to calculate the prefix sums of this particular map. So the final map will look something like this. Right. This will denote that there is one range that has started from 1 and there are uh, two ranges that have started up till index 2. There are four ranges that have started up till index 3. Right. So this is what it is denoting. Now the next thing is we will do the same thing with the ending map but here there will be a difference. So, for example, any range end, ends at index 8, right. So, if any range ends at index 8, I will try to find what are all the ranges starting from index 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8, right. I will try to find all these ranges and I will also try to find what is what are all the ranges that have ended at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7, right. So, this is the end, this is the start. Since I am already calculating the prefix sums, I will, I will not have to add all of these values. I will just find what is the value stored at this particular position and what is the value stored at this particular position. Since this is a map and not a vector, what will happen is there might be a case when 8 is not present in the starting vector. The last element that was present was 3. right? So we will have to take care of this. If we do not find 8, we will have to take the last element that was present. Similarly, if 7 was not present, we will have to take the last element that was present. So essentially what we have to do is if we are at a position 8 to calculate the number of items or the frequency of the current item i we will have to uh, like add or we will have to check the value that is present at start of any value which is less than or equals to i right. So if 8 is less than or equals to i we will have to check at 8 right. So it, it can be any value that is less than or equals to i and uh, for ending vector we will have to check a value that is strictly less than i. So this is how we will be calculating the frequency at index i. Let me just explain this part to you again. So if you want to calculate the frequency at any index i, we will have to check the frequency in the starting array. Let us say this is an index j. right? So j can be less than or equal to i. So this index should be less than or equal to i. Now similarly if I want to find in the ending vector, in this case j should be strictly less than i. This way we will be able to find the frequency of the ith element. Once you find the frequency of the ith element, we will be able to tell whether it is greater than or equal to k or not. Right? If it is greater than equal or equal to k, we can update our answer. Now, how we will be traversing through the values of i? Right? This is the next question. The most optimal way to is to traverse through the ending map. Why? Because if, if you find some range that is starting at uh, this particular point and ending at this particular point. Let's say this is 2 and this is 4. So, if the all the elements in this particular range have the same frequency, we have to tell we have to take the maximum element. Right. So that is why it is always optimal to uh, traverse the ending vector. If we would have to take the minimum element, then it would it would have been always optimal to traverse the minimum element, the starting vector. Right. Because if if any at any range all the elements have the same frequency, this is the starting point and this is the ending point. The ending point will always be greater than the starting point. Greater than or equals to in any case. Right. So it is always optimal in this particular question to traverse to the ending vector. Right. So this is the whole idea of the problem. Let me just quickly summarize it. So uh, we have solved these kind of problems multiple times and uh, the main idea in this uh, type of problems is 
to find the frequency of any element at index i you have to take the sum of all the frequencies starting from 0 till s of i right till the index i so these are the starting ranges the number of ranges that have started at s0 the number of ranges that have started at, s at s1 the number of ranges that have started at s2 and so on up to s of i right now uh, we have to subtract some value from it and that would be the number of ranges that have ended at 0, the number of ranges that have ended at 1 and so on up to the number of ranges that have ended at i minus 1. Why i minus 1? Because uh, these ranges will end before the starting of the current range or the current element. Right. So we discuss this part also although it is this is not the way we will be solving this particular problem. I just discuss it because this is something you should know while you are solving these kind of problems. The way we will be uh, solving this particular part it, uh, problem is that uh, we already know that we need the prefix sums for at array of i we need the prefix sums of s s0 till si and for the ending we need s e ending 0 till ending of i minus 1 so we'll uh, store all the values in a map all the frequencies in a map we'll also calculate the prefix sums and after we have calculated the prefix sums what we'll do is uh, in the starting error, in the starting map we'll find an index j such that it is less than or equals to i Right. If we are calculating the frequency for any index i, we will find a j in the starting map such that j is less than or equals to i. Why less than or equals to i? Because here you see we are including all the elements till s of i. If I am at index i, I will find end of j as such that j is less than i. Why? Because we are adding all the frequencies of ending vector up to i minus 1. Right. So, I sh so uh, j should be strictly less than i. Right. So, this is what uh, we will be doing and once we have found this, uh, we will do we will check it for all the values of i. Now, how, how we will traverse through all the values of i? We will basically traverse through the ending map. Why? Because if, if there is a range we'll have with a starting point and an ending point and all the elements in this particular range have the same frequency, we would want all we would always want to take the maximum element. That is, that is why it is always optimal to traverse through the ending points of the maps. Right. So this is how you can solve this particular problem. And now let me just show you the code for this problem. So the code is uh, like uh, uh, my implementation is a bit complex. Uh, I believe like there might exist some simple implementation so you can also check some other uh, solutions out but this is the way that will help you to solve other problems as well apart from this particular problem. So here you see I have created a map starting and ending map and for all the values in the intervals I just increment the value of start at y intervals of i0. So this is i0 depends uh, denotes the starting point and i1 denotes the ending point. So this is how I calculate the uh, uh, starting and the ending frequencies. Now I just create the prefix sums for the starting vector, starting map uh, in this way. What I do is I create the last element as 0 and I just add the last element to the current element of the map and I just update my last element as the current element. So this is how I will be updating, I uh, will be creating a prefix sum of the starting map. Now uh, what I do is I initialize my answer with minus 1 and similarly I create a last variable for the ending map as well. Now I create an iterator which is n.begin. Right? So while uh, this particular iterator is not equal to n dot e dot n dot n, uh, so this will be actually the last pointer of ending map. Now uh, I cre I create the prefix sums in the same way I did it earlier for the starting map. Now what I do is I create the end pointer as e, so that's my current pointer. Now what I do is I'll try to find this particular value in the starting map, right? So if the start pointer uh, like goes to the end, that means there is uh, no such value uh, equals to the current pointer or the, the value that I have found is actually greater than the current point. So I will explain you like uh, when will this case be useful. So since these are maps we have to do these kinds of modifications otherwise if, if it was a, a vector or a array we would not have to do we will not have to do this. For example if I am trying to find 8 right so the last element that was present in my starting map was 6 right and uh, there might be a case that there are no elements present after 6 and there might be a case then that 10 is present after 6. So when I do lower bound in on the map uh, trying to find 8 it will return me either 10 or if there was if 10 was not present it will return me the last um, last pointer that is start dot end right so if either either the current pointer is equal to start dot end the pointer that i have found is equal to start dot end i need to go one step backwards or or if the pointer that i have found was pointing towards 10 which is an element greater than 8 since i was trying to find 8 i just need a value smaller than the previous value right so it would be 6 so that is the like issue that you have to that you have to face while applying lower bound. So this is just some common thing that you will usually do while solving problems. So if the pointer becomes start dot end or if the value at the pointer is greater than the current value, that I just then I just decrement the start pointer, right? So I just uh, find the values that I have started at the uh, current pointer as like taking the second value or the frequency of that particular element. 
Now I also create an element end it and it will it is initially equal to zero. So if the end pointer is not equal to end dot begin, right? So if the current pointer is not the first pointer, that means I can go one step backwards and I can just take the value from it. So if the ending pointer was let's say three, right? And there was an ending pointer at two as well. So I would definitely want to take all the values less than three, right? But if I was at the second position itself, then there are no elements before it. So for this particular value, the value would be zero, right? So that is why what I have done. I have initialized it with zero. But if there exists a previous pointer, then I just decrement it and go to the previous pointer and take its value, right? Now I, I can calculate the frequency of the current index by doing started minus ended. This will be the frequency, and I can just check whether it is greater than or equals to k, right? Now I can just uh, if it is greater than or equal to k, I can just mark my answer as maximum of answer comma the current index, right? And I just increment that my e pointer to traverse the ending map. So this is how we solve this problem, and at the end we can just return the answer variable which will have our maximum index. So this would be the solution for today's problem of the day. Powerful integer. Let me just quickly submit this problem and show it to you that uh, the solution works. So you see that uh, this is going to pass all the test cases. Yeah. So this uh, solution is correct, and uh, uh, I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. It's always free, of course, and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. And uh, I see a lot of people who watch these videos regularly have not subscribed yet. So if you're one of them, do consider subscribing to this channel. Share this channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye bye.